Senator Hawley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Abadi, let me just stay with you. You just started to answer Senator Blackburn's question that not releasing the 1023 or talking about it as a matter of life and death, question of life and death, you said. Explain. It is potentially a question of life and death for with, whom? with regard to the source of the information. So, okay, so now we've confirmed that the document exists. That's progress because the FBI director initially denied that it exists. Why did he do that? We, we have already and previously acknowledged the existence of the documents. Yeah, after you first denied it. Now, when a member of this committee read it, Right, the FBI director, let's just get the record straight. The FBI director initially said it doesn't exist. Then Senator Grassley said, I've read it. Then he said, oh, okay, well, gotcha. I guess it does exist. Now you're going back and forth with members of this committee, what's in it. Why don't you just release it? Is it classified? The document is not classified. Okay, will you commit to releasing it? Senator, we'll take that back and we will work with you in this committee. Uh, how about just a yes or no? Will you commit to releasing this unclassified document that alleges that the President of the United States, the President of the United States, has taken $5 million or more in bribes from a foreign nation? The document has already been released pursuant to a subpoena to the House Oversight Committee. Has it been it released will, to this committee? We will work with this committee within the parameters that are established to meet Will you the release request. the document to the public? It's unclassified. Don't you think the American people have a right to see it? Uh, Senator, the document, as you know, contains sensitive information that has bearing on the life of the source of the information, potentially. You can redact the source's name. We do this all the time. In some instances, Senator, and I know you know this, that is not sufficient to protect people. And that's what we strive and work to do each and every day. And I hope you would take that seriously, too. Oh, I take it very seriously. But I also take seriously the fact that your institution has repeatedly abused its authority, has repeatedly targeted political opponents. Your institution is the one that went to the door of pro-life protesters with SWAT teams to try and intimidate people because of their speech. Your institution is the one that treated parents as domestic terrorists because of their speech. Your institution is the one that, according to the court, the FISA court, ran 278,000 unwarranted, probably illegal queries on Americans, right? That was your institution, correct? There, the, with respect to the compliance incidents, yes, some of the other things you cited, we can take them one by one, they are not. Compliance, you, you would characterize the unlawful querying 278,000 times of American citizens as compliance issues? We've said before, I've said that the totally unacceptable. Who's been uh, fired for it? Individuals involved uh, are handled through the disciplinary process. Who's been fired for it? We have, there w in, the, in the case of the uh, unintentional instance where something similar happened, we have fired people in the past. Wait, I, I'm sorry, what, what, what does that word salad mean? The unintentional instance where some, what, what does that mean? Who's been fired for the 278,000 times that you improperly or illegally queried the database for American citizens? When we Anybody? When we find intentional incidents. Well, you're saying that the 278,000 queries were unintentional? I believe that's correct. Wow, 278,000 times American citizens' information was queried by your agency unintentionally? That's your testimony? I would want to go back and check that, Senator. Uh, but well, yes, that's what you just told me. My understanding is that the vast majority of Well, wait, the, that's different. You just said it was. You just said it was unintentional. Now it's the vast majority. Which is it? Do you know? I would want to go back and check it. So you don't know. My understanding is that likely all are were unintentional. Likely in, all. So first nature. it was all of them, then it was vast majority, now it's likely all. So you don't know is the answer to the question. I don't know the answer as we sit here today, but I will Could find have started out and with I will that, get probably. back to you. Who was fired for the lies to the FISA court for the Carter Page warrant? Who, who, who was fired for that? Anybody? Has anybody been held accountable for your institution deliberately lying to a FISA court to get a wiretap on an ongoing presidential campaign? There is an ongoing disciplinary process with respect to individuals involved in that. Here's the deal. You're back in front of us asking for the reauthorization of extraordinary authorities. Multiple courts have uncovered extraordinary abuses perpetrated by your agency. You are at the same time concealing information about serious allegations made against the President of the United States 
even as your institution also targets his chief political opponent in an unprecedented way. Why would we ever give you the blank check that you want to continue surveilling American citizens in an improper manner? Why would we ever do that? Senator, we're here to talk about reforms today. I did get confirmation that the query is... No, we're not. We're here to talk about the reauthorization of Section 702. Why would we reauthorize it, given your track record of abuse and illegal and proper surveillance and political targeting? Why would we do that? Why would it be appropriate for this body to do that? We've made significant reforms and implemented corrective measures. We've seen significant progress as a result of that, Senator. The... Uh, so you Queries say. that you mentioned early were, in fact, unintentional. That's what I was just told by my counterpart. That, that is an amazing. The earliest question, the earlier two, question. So your testimony is the 280,000 queries of American citizens was unintentional. That's your final answer? That's how they were assessed by that team that did the review. I'm not satisfied with that. That's yeah, why we've that implemented further measures, as I announced earlier today. Yeah, I, I don't believe that at all. And frankly, we've heard from your agency a thousand times that you're going to do better, we'll do better. You promised after the abuses of Title I you'd do better. And then we find out that in the meantime, you're illegal query, illegally querying 280,000 American citizens' data. It's just, it's unbelievable, frankly. Everything you say is unbelievable. Senator Tillis. Senator Hawley, you're recognized for your questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to the witnesses for being here. Director Ray, let me start with you if I could. I think the last time that I got to visit with you was Back in August, August 4th of this year, you were at the Senate Judiciary Committee. You remember that, I assume. We had to cut that hearing short. We were supposed to do two rounds of questions. You said you had to be somewhere, so we cut it short. Republicans were not able to ask a second round as we had been informed we would. The press reported shortly thereafter that the reason that the hearing had to be cut short is because you were flying on a Gulfstream jet for a personal vacation in the Adirondacks. Please tell me that's not accurate. Senator, the hearing was, cut short, was not cut short from my experience. We had agreed beforehand on the time and, and, uh, and length of it, and my, I was very surprised to find that the, any man on the committee was surprised. Uh, as to how I uh, fly, I am required, not only uh, permitted, but required to fly uh, on uh, an FBI plane wherever I go. That's so, so you were going on vacation? I was, yes. So you left a statutorily required oversight hearing in order to go on a personal vacation in the Adirondacks? I took a flight to go visit my family, uh, as had been previously arranged in conjunction no, no, with no. the leadership of the committee. The ranking member, Chuck Grassley, asked you during the hearing, he said, I assume you must have other business. You said, yes. He then said, if you have a business trip, you've got your own plane, can't it wait a while? He then said, Chuck Grassley, we only just heard half an hour ago that now you have to leave. We were going to have a seven-minute round followed by a three-minute round. I've got seven people on my side of the aisle, that included me, who are waiting for this additional round. Is there any reason we can't accommodate them for 21 minutes? And you said you had a plane to catch. You had somewhere to go. And now we find out it was for vacation? The, the reference to other business was not a reference to that day. It was a reference to the following week where Senator Grassley and I were going to see each other in Iowa when I had other business in Iowa, and I did, in fact, see him then. So wait, you had to leave the hearing early because you had you're going to see him later in Iowa in a week? No, I had to leave uh, when I said I was going to have to leave, as had been previously organized <laughs> with the leadership of the committee. You, you left an oversight hearing before the Senate Judiciary Committee required by statute so you could vacation with your family. I find that absolutely unbelievable and, frankly, indefensible. Now, is it your practice to use government planes? You say you do this all the time. You flew in a Gulfstream 550, I think, that was originally purchased for counterterrorism purposes. You were using it to go to, what is it, Saranac Lake? Is that how I say it? I've never been there. Is that, is that the right pronunciation, Saranac Lake? That was your destination? Yes. So uh, did you enjoy the flight? I mean, did you pay for it? Yes, I paid for it. Will you turn over all receipts and reimbursement to Sen this committee? Senator, we will be happy to comply with oversight requests related to the use of the plane. As I said, and it's important for people to understand. Uh, why don't you just give me a I yes? Just, when, I, will, will you turn over the receipts for your flight? I will turn over the information related to my committee. use of the plane. The use of the plane, I am required, not just permitted, required even for personal travel to use the FBI plane. How convenient and for I you. Pay, and I pay every single time that I use the plane for personal I'm glad use, it's available for you to jet away from your statutorily required 
hearings and oversight before this Congress where you denied the ability of members of Congress to ask you questions because you had to go on a personal vacation using a government plane. Let's just look at some of the things while you've been vacationing that your FBI has been doing. According to numerous whistleblowers who have come forward to members of this body, to members of the House, the FBI has been sending more than, in one instance, a dozen armed agents to a rural Pennsylvania home of a Catholic pro-life demonstrator to arrest him at gunpoint in front of his children in early morning hours, despite the fact that he posed no risk of violence or threat and had previously offered to turn himself in. Numerous whistleblowers, field agents, have alleged that D.C., your headquarters has pulled them off working on child sex abuse cases, working on human trafficking cases, in order to work on January 6th matters for this reason, to give the appearance, they say, they say, that there are hundreds of new domestic terrorism cases in the country, when in fact there are not. Whistleblowers, field agents have also said that D.C. has ordered the use of SWAT teams on nonviolent suspects who may have attended a January 6th rally and they have been ordered to conduct surveillance and knock on doors of people who were not even in D.C. on January 6th. And again, all of this, according to the whistleblowers, these are your agents, all of this in order to make it look as if there's a mass surge in domestic terrorism all across the country when, in fact, the stats are being padded by political directive in your office. They also say, these whistleblowers, the D.C. leadership deliberately suppressed investigations into Hunter Biden, contrary to FBI procedure, and have also retaliated against FBI agents and whistleblowers who have contacted Congress, which, by the way, they are protected by statute to do so. This is what's happening at your FBI while you are evading oversight hearings. Mr. Director, do you think you're still up to this job? I absolutely think I'm still up to this job, and I think our workforce feels the same way. Well, I don't. And frankly, I think you should have been gone a long time ago. And given your behavior recently, I think it only makes it more clear. Are there any travel plans today that we should be aware of that you have? We're supposed to have a second round. Will you be here for that? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.